My name's Pamela Irving and I've been a full-time artist since 1982 and I work across media, work with uh, sculpture, mosaics and painting and drawing. Larry Latrobe was made in 1992 and he was part of a group of works that I'd done called Perfect Pets where I'd made a series of dogs that um, I thought would be uh, good pets for people that lived in the city to own. You know, you didn't have to walk them, you don't have to feed them, any of that kind of thing. He sort of grew out of a body of works of mythological images. Um, I've done a whole lot of works about Romulus and Remus. So it's sort of it, the, the genesis really comes from that kind of image. Um, and it was just alliteration on the street names. I wanted to do Bazza Burke, Clary Collins, Larry Latrove and all the other streets in Melbourne, but um, I just commissioned to do uh, Larry Latrobe. Um, it's sort of a significant piece for me because I made him um, at the same time that I made my son. So I was <laughs> nine months pregnant when the installation was due. And um, so I kind of had two boys in the same week, which so, so is kind of a special little character in my creation. I installed the dog, or the Melbourne City Council and I installed the dog in 1992. And it quickly became one of those kind of um, you know, lovable kind of characters around the city. It was really well padded and, you know, kids were always sitting on it and so forth. And I think it probably became part of a university prank or something. Um, anyway, one night it got jackhammered out of the ground in the middle of the night. No one uh, had any idea what had happened or who took it. And, um, and then there was a campaign set up by the Melbourne Times to try and find Larry and get Larry out of hiding. And I've, uh, there's a lot of press coverage about that and very cute little stories. And people made replicas of Larry and stuck him on the tram and said, you know, where's Larry Latrobe? Um, Raw Studios did a Welcome Home Larry show to try and entice him out of hiding. Um, a Moomba float was made of him. Um, the float was taken to Osaka, which is Melbourne's sister city. And um, the, the Moomba float won best float in the Midasoji parade. So he's got quite a sort of little history. Um, so the original Larry was never recovered. Um, so then the, the fellow that owned the studio at the time, Peter Colliner, came forward and said he would pay for a recasting. So he paid for the recasting of Larry and then the uh, reinstallation was, was done by the Melbourne City Council. The second Larry was unveiled by uh, the, the, the then Lord Mayor Ivan Deverson and um, Jugularity, a Melbourne band, wrote a song called Larry, a Dogumentary. And that's, there's some fantastic lyrics that go with that. And um, there was a bit of a party and, and yeah, it was, you know, well welcomed home. I think it's just really healthy for our whole society to have artwork in the, in the public domain. Um, you know, a whole lot of concrete, grey concrete buildings is not sort of, I don't think, um, a great place or environment to be. And I think when, once you start to see art around, people feel more relaxed and, and um, and Melbourne's got some fantastic examples of laneway pieces and public sculptures and memorial pieces. It's a really, it's, it's a wonderful city to be in. I don't know, it's different to making works for an exhibition, quite different. And I think you have to make work, when you're making work for a public space, you do have to consider, you know, other people's responses to it. But it's not the only consideration.